Hello and welcome to another episode of Christine's Coloring and Crafts. I'm Christine and today we are going to be coloring a mermaid for a mermaid and uh, I decided to go ahead, I'm trying to find the beginning of the book, <laughs> and get a page out of Mood Maids by Deborah Mueller. Uh, this was from her mermaid box that she sold last year and I figured this would be a fun and easy and quick little color here. So let's get to coloring and get to uh, doing a little bit of talking and go from there. I'll be using the Artix pencils today um, for the skin, which I know there's not a whole lot of. We will use uh, Light Peach and Cadmium Orange Light. I know it's not easy to see any of these names. Sorry about that guys. We'll also use Peach and Peach Puff and then we will use some Goldenrod and some Sienna Brown. Uh, we may not use all of these colors but that's the ones I picked out. I mean like I said there's not a lot of skin here so we will just see what comes up of everything. Let me do in some shadows real quick here. And hopefully everybody's had a good week this week. I figured the golden rod would be a little too light, but that's okay. Oh, it's been my second week of training and my second week of day shift. I'm still not completely used to it, uh, but I'm getting there. I do sleep a little more on those weekends, or these weekends. Um, I went and saw my sister today. I tried last Saturday. Uh, but as expected, she did not uh, warm up to the idea of a routine change very well. I need to make these sharper points. There we go. So we decided to try again this weekend, and she was a lot more uh, welcoming to that uh, schedule change. She doesn't really care for schedule changes. all that much. She likes her routines. She wanted me to pick her up for Mother's Day tomorrow and I said or maybe today depending on when I get this video uploaded. Sometimes it takes a little while. Sometimes it uploads right away. But anyway um, she wanted me to take her out and I was like I'm sorry but we're you know, we're already doing a bunch of stuff tomorrow, and we'll have to go out another time, and I offered to take her out on Memorial Day weekend, and she was fine with that. She did want to go visit uh, Mom's grave, and... I told her uh, that we could do it on Father's Day when we go see Dad. I don't know if that was the right thing or the wrong thing, but I just didn't feel like going to see Mom on a day that's also for me because I have two offspring of my own and I'd like to spend time with them. Anyway, I've been trying to color um, quite a bit. I haven't been very successful uh, just to the shift change. It's been quite a ride to get used to. I'm not sure when I will get used to it, um, but we're gonna keep on trying. I know it's Saturday. Um, about 10.50 Eastern Time right now. And I'm already wore out. I'm pretty tired. And wow, I'm really shaking this table. I'm sorry, guys. We still haven't found a good place to move the phone holder to. But hopefully you can still see me coloring this little mermaid here. I love Deborah's mermaids. They're, they're beautiful. They're fun to color. 
I didn't pick out anything for her lips or her top. My bad. And I think we'll probably just do like one layer because she is pretty tiny. And this would be a pretty quick color, I think. And I didn't want to do nothing super fancy. I just wanted to do a little mermaid for the video tonight. It's been pretty quiet. around here. It's been pretty nice. Uh, my oldest did get a little bit ill. He's got a pretty good cold going on. But he's hanging in there. Uh, last weekend we did get some yard work done finally. Got some trees cut down with the help of my boyfriend. And Got some stumps out and some debris removed. We still got a long, long way to go. Um, but I really feel once I get used to day shift, I will be doing a lot more yard work after work because I'll be getting off at 5. And it's in a way an easier job than my old job. And I, I talk like I like switch companies or anything. It's the same company. It's just a different department. Um, but we won't be taking calls. We will most likely be making some calls. I don't think they'll have us full force until like maybe the second week of June or third week of June. Which is fine. It gives me plenty of time to uh, really pay attention and, and learn. So I'll go ahead and put some shadow back in her face here. Noses this tiny are really hard to do. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I haven't been wearing my wrist brace because it's been just too hot for that activity. Way too hot. But way too hot for that. I gotta make some toys for the big bird that's now over at my youngest house. Oh, that's right, I wanted to use a little bit of white up on the shoulder. And that's going to be the Prismacolor white. But all this does is just make like a little highlighted area right here. And guys, I have fallen so far behind on videos that I watch. Oh, it's insane. Because by the time I get off of work, and I, th I think I'm going to just turn around and color, and I'm just like, no, I just want to go to bed. First couple of nights, I went to bed at like 8 o'clock. <laughs> Because I was like tired. And then I've been trying to stay up till at least 11 since I get up at 7. And on the weekend, stay up till midnight ish. But anyway, if you have this book. Um, Deborah only sold so many of them last year, so they were limited edition. Um, but if you have this book, these pencils actually feel quite nice in it. Let me sharpen this one. They're pretty smooth. The paper's really nice too. It's not like super, super thick cardstock, but it's very smooth. And it's it's cardstock. It's good cardstock. She really likes to 
make really good stuff. And I wish I'd had the idea before now, but I should have brought in some water because I have some paint brushes sitting up there. We could have done like a watercolor background. I tend to not to do backgrounds and stuff like this though. It's just a real quick, simple color. I think one of the pictures I did, I used some, um, whatchamacallit's. <laughs> you know, those things. Shoot. Distressed oxides. There we go. There we go. So far she's looking cute, I think. Hopefully you guys like her. We'll just do some shadows here. I might just go ahead and use some of my uh, glitter pins to do her lips because I was going to use one of them to do the stars and the starfish although I could probably use a couple of these colors to do the starfish I still don't have anything for her top we'll see how the day goes but that should be the end of her skin is that other arm. Let me sharpen this one. There we go. I don't like to get super complicated with these. fun. Something nice and relaxing. I've been thinking about doing one of the super fun challenges. The one that I've got my eyeballs on is the five marker challenge. Maybe do one of these pages with five markers. But since I know where all my markers are, I probably should have like my son pick out five markers. Just pick out five colors. It doesn't matter which ones. They don't have to match. You can make it easy or complicated like Manda said on her video. Um, but it's supposed to be, I think she said either Megan or Meg and Manda's challenge. Um, if I do the challenge, I'll tag them in the video below, or in the description below when I do the challenge video, if I do it. But there we go. And we did end up using all the colors. I'm just going to put these under here. <coughs> then we're going to go ahead and do our hair. And I decided on a myriad of purples. I don't know, again, if I'm going to use them all or not. Um, but we got Wisteria. And then um, Lavender and Lilac. And then we got Imperial Purple. And then we got Violet. And then we got Cobalt Violet. Now I may just color her top. Let me sharpen these up. Some of these really need to go sharpening. I may just use these on her top too, because I really like purple. All right. We'll see how these go. And I'm doing her top. <laughs> and I'm supposed to do her hair. That's okay. I pretty much knew I was going to do her top in purple anyway. Maybe we will just use a couple of the colors for her top. There we go. We'll, we'll go ahead and put a couple layers of them on.
There we go. That'll work. All right. Now, let's do her hair. Even though these are, like, normally quick and easy, they can still take some time if you, you know, go a little bit on the complicated side. Not super complicated, but you know what I mean. I don't think I'm going to use violet down there. I'm going to use it right here. I think I'm going to go ahead and take violet out. After I do the top. There we go. Okay. And then we'll get the Imperial Violet here. And it definitely looks a little bit different from the top. I like that. I think that's how we'll keep it. And we'll put a couple of layers down on this too since I, I want the hair to kind of stand out. The hair and the tail. But yeah, that, these definitely look different from the top. I like that. Hopefully we're all still in the camera. I know I've moved her around a little bit. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. So here in Ohio, it's been very nice. Um, a little warm upstairs. That's why I got some fans going. Um, but overall, let me sharpen this. very tolerable. I'm enjoying the weather. I'm not a big fan of winter. I do like spring. And I love having a period of time where my windows are open. And now that we can get one open up here in the office slash craft room, I'm very happy. I'll just turn a couple of fans on and we're good to go. I did start growing some tomatoes. I don't know if they're going to be grown up enough for planting time. I hope so. There we go. I don't know if I want to use the lavender. Let's see. That's not bad. It's more the color of that, but that's okay. Let's see. And I don't care if that does go a little bit dark. That's what erasers are for. Let's see if we put a little white on top of it, what it looks like. I say, let's, that's what the racers are for, and then, hey, let's use some white on top of it and see what happens. I kind of like that. But we'll still just leave those three a little bit over here. I need something to block it. Let's use this little tool. There we go. Because I don't want them sliding all over the place. I'm going to go back here with the cobalt violet. I really like the cobalt violet. It's kind of a really nifty purpley blue that I really think is pretty. Of course, I'm, a, I'm already a big purple fan, so all the purples are pretty to me. thought about using markers and then decided I'd rather color with pencils. And so, anyway, 
even though I was really, really tired, the neighbors caught this contraption. They built it. And it was a giant bullseye board. And they got three, I call them hatchets, but everybody calls it axe throwing. And they were over there having a good old time, and I could hear it. So I went outside because you know I'm nosy. I want to see, I want to see what the fun's all about. I'm a nosy. It's okay. And they, they see me standing out there watching. They're like, "Hey, you want to come over?" I was like, "Sure." Let me lock up my house. So I ran in, got my keys, and uh, locked up the house and came on over. And. That was actually quite fun. I'd never thrown axes before, and that was really a good time. And the, the neighbors around here are so sweet. They're really great people. I got really, really lucky, because I know at the apartment complex, it wasn't always like that. But here, everybody is just so nice, and they're so friendly. We've got the other neighbors next door. They're going to grow some veggies. I think they said like corn, lettuce, and cucumbers. And if they aren't growing tomatoes, I'm thinking of asking if they want to, you know, exchange a few of mine for a few of theirs. That way we can make, all make nice salads together. I hope their corn grows though. Squirrels are notorious around this area. They're little brats, that's for sure. <laughs> they're cute, but they're little brats. <laughs> I'm gonna take a drink of water here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, let's get this last little piece of hair on this side, up here, and then we'll start on the bottom here. Now I know there's a ton of people that color way better than me, but stuff like this is just fun. I mean, I'm not a beginner beginner, um, but I definitely have not been coloring long enough to make some of the most beautiful work you've ever seen <laughs> in your life, which that's okay. <clears throat> the main thing isn't to make the most beautiful work in your life. It's to have fun. And if you happen to be super talented, well, great. That should make it even more fun. But if not, and you just color like me, there's nothing wrong with it. There is definitely nothing wrong with it. Half of this, most of this, all of this. Oopsies. Erase that little part off there. All of this is for fun. Most of my stuff I have really enjoyed doing. Every once in a while I'll do a coloring and I'll just be like, what was I thinking? I need to sharpen. But yeah, every once in a while, what was I thinking? And I know I went into Mermaid saying I'm not going to do all mermaids for the month. But here I am so far, the... All but one page has been all mermaids. <laughs> oh well, it's still fun. I'm finding it fun, so I'll happily do it. I think right here with her arm, I'm going to take my Prismacolor Black a little bit here. Right there, just create a nice little shadow line. I don't know if you guys can see it, but yeah. I like creating that nice little shadow line. Make sure I got all the white of the paper. 
All right, now let's do her other side here. Excuse me. My little nose wants to run. I should put a leash on it. One of these days I'll get some. Whatchamacallits. Tissues up here. I got tissues, I just never think to bring them upstairs. I got issues with my tissues. Don't mind me, guys. I'm just a weirdo. And it's okay. So hopefully, um, everybody will have a good day tomorrow, whether or not you are a mother, have a mother, know a mother. And if you're a mom, and I include a mom to every kind of creature, whether it be a furry, a feathered, a scaly, or a human, I hope you have a very happy Mother's Day. We need it. I don't know if we got one or not. Um, like a sister's day. I'll have to look that up. Because I think my sister would like that. If we did something fun. And if we don't have a sister's day, well then we're going to make a sister's day. Dog on it. Yes, we are. We'll just make one. And then I think that's pretty much it. We could go ahead while I'm coloring and I believe I mentioned it in a prior video about doing coloring with fraud tips tips and tricks to preventing fraud um, one of the things if you haven't already known uh, Lowe's.com or their website uh, did come up with an issue Um, I wouldn't say it got hacked. I mean, that was the easiest word for me to use at the time. But basically, it was an issue with their programming where it left it susceptible to uh, people's credit cards and stuff getting exposed and used. I'm going to sharpen this one again. So if you have a Lowe's card... Uh, please go ahead, and you haven't had it replaced within the past two months, please go ahead and get it replaced. Um, just in case somebody did get your number. Nobody likes surprise fraud. If you haven't used your Lowe's card in a while, just check on it. If you don't want a new card, um, and you don't want the uh, temporary credit hit of closing an account, just ask the bank to go ahead and block the card. Um, you could tell them to put a temporary block on it. And that'll keep the card from getting used. And eventually, I don't know how long Lowe's takes to close down cards, um, but eventually it will quietly close itself. And we won't have to worry about somebody using it. without your permission. You won't have to worry about it. Um, but one of the, speaking of Lowe's, one of the favorite things to do with people's Lowe's cards is to buy gift cards. I guess there's certain Lowe's that have self-checkouts or kiosks, whatever you want to call them. And these guys will buy thousands of dollars worth of gift cards with your Lowe's account. Uh, sometimes 
uh, they will actually trick you into doing it. And that'll kind of be the theme we'll talk about here while I'm coloring is the uh, gift card scam. Now scammers have a tendency to prey on the elderly, uh, but they'll take anyone, anyone they could take for a ride. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, I'm too smart for their scams, or I'll never fall for their scams. Let me tell you, these guys are highly trained in the art of social engineering. And when I say highly trained, I mean highly trained. They will have you withdrawing money out of your account or buying gift cards before you even realize what's going on. And while the vast majority of people may not fall for that, there are people who will. And that's why they like preying on the elderly, uh, because odds are they may not be quick to pick up on it, or they may have dementia or Alzheimer's or something else, uh, brain-wise, that may make them think that this is all perfectly an acceptable task to perform. And the main way they go about doing this with uh, most people, elderly are not uh, their only targets. They love to tell, I could, I could probably tell you the hundreds of calls I got about people saying uh, they didn't buy such and such on Amazon and that we need to shut their card down and we need to, to decline that payment, yada, yada, yada. All right, now we're gonna do her tail in some greenish blues. We're going to use light aqua. And we're going to use jade blue. We're going to use ocean green and then dark teal. And then let me sharpen these up. Here we go. One more. Yeah, I can tell you the literal dozens of people that have called me. Well, I didn't make this purchase. You need to decline that payment. We need a fraud claim. And there ain't a thing on their card. And it's all because they got the email saying, hey, you've been charged for X, Y, or Z off of Amazon. If you didn't make this purchase, please call this number, and then the email will have a number. And a lot of times people do call that number, and the scammer will promise you a refund when in fact there was never a charge to begin with. So something you're going to always want to do when you receive emails like that and you think maybe your your bank account or your credit card has been hacked and someone did make a charge on there or several charges that you didn't authorize, always call the bank. Call the number on the back of your card or the number on your statement. Oftentimes the number on the back of your card and the one on your statement will be a match that's okay. Just call that one. Don't ever call a number that you're given in an email. Don't ever call a number you're given in a voicemail. Even though banks can and do call out to their customers. Due to the nature of scammers, it's better to be safe than sorry. And while you may get transferred a few times because like it or not, customer service and fraud are entirely separate departments. You can't and shouldn't expect any one person to be knowledgeable of everything that goes on with credit cards and bank accounts. 
every department has a specialty. I mean, would you call customer service expecting to get a collections agent? No, you wouldn't. Especially if you owed money. <laughs> anyway, don't call customer service expecting to get a fraud agent. Call customer service, tell them what's going on, let them validate who you are, and let them get you over to the fraud department. If there's any actual fraud. If there's not, customer service will be happy to tell you there's no such charge as X, Y, and Z from Amazon on your account. If there is, they will get you to fraud and fraud will take great care of you and get you a new card or a new bank account, whichever. Now there are some small banks where their people you talk to are knowledgeable in all of those things because they have a lot fewer processes. Another thing that, and you know, of course this stuff isn't fraud related, but another thing, please be patient with those people that you're talking to. And don't tell them, well, XYZ Bank doesn't do that because XYZ Bank isn't ABC Bank. You know what I mean? Please just be kind to those people you're talking to. They have things that they have to do. They have to ask questions. They have to validate your identity. Just go with it. Also, um, now that we'll get back to the fraud stuff, for your bank accounts and your credit cards, please change your passwords often, meaning a lot. A lot of these guys, they never even call in. A lot of scammers and fraudsters and hackers never even call in to the bank. They hack your online or they socially engineer you to give their online, give them your online information. They go online and then they change your address, they change your password, they change your email address, they change your phone number. They make all of these changes, especially to cards or bank accounts you don't use very often. That's one of the things that they're looking for, um, especially credit cards that you don't use a lot. If there's cards you have and you don't want to use them a lot, call your bank, your bank, you know, your credit card issuer, and tell them, please put a temporary block on my account. That is the best, single best thing you could do for your credit cards that you aren't going to use. I doubt that works with bank accounts, but it definitely works with credit cards. Remember, temporary block. I'm going to put this one aside because I don't think I'm going to need it anymore. On your credit card that you're not planning to use. And if you think you might use it someday, that's okay. Most banks have easy procedures to go ahead and remove that temporary block. But you need to get it put on before someone figures out how to get into your account and change your information. It is imperative that you get that done. If it's a card you use often, pay attention to your bill very closely every month. A lot of times, I'm going to sharpen this, these guys will make small charges on your account before they go for the big stuff.
And by the time you realize it, it's already too late. So protect yourself by changing your password often. For cards that you don't use very often, call your bank issuer and ask them to put a temporary restriction on your account until you feel you are ready to use the card in which you could call them and have them lift it. There may be things they want you to do like a little text message or an email passcode or even biometrics authentication. Do it. Don't whine about it. Just do it. They may just go ahead and remove it for you. If they do that, I'd worry about them. Because who else could call in pretending to be you and get that uh, restriction removed or make changes to your account without your authorization? I worry about banks like that. And if it's your local bank, they better be asking you to come in with some ID. Not just like, okay, we'll take that right off of there for you, Mrs. Smith. No, you better be protecting this stuff. Anyway. <laughs> Some of the scams that these guys run, other than the XYZ was purchased on Amazon.com. Sorry, I had to go ahead and sharpen that again. Is they will send emails pretty much about any company. It's not just Amazon. They will send you an email saying there was a purchase on your PayPal account. Send you an email saying there was a purchase for Norton. Purchase for you know, LifeLock, a purchase for McAfee, Geek Squad, eBay. Here, I'm going to go ahead and put this up a little bit down here. Anything that gets your attention. And they, you know, like for McAfee and Norton and don't go on it. I hate when I go outside the lines. You know, Geek Squad and stuff like that, they like to keep them relatively small, like anywhere from two to five hundred dollars. But when they go for PayPal and eBay and Amazon, they like to give the shocker charges. Anywhere from seven hundred dollars to three or four grand. Easy. Saying tablets, iPhones, iPads, all kinds of things were purchased using your card. And that's why I say it is imperative that you call your bank issuer. They like to call people up and pretend they're the authorities or the U.S. Border Patrol. And here in the U.S., we do know and are well aware that the Border Patrol has been stepping out of their boundaries in certain states. Don't let that fool you into thinking the person on the other line is anything other than a scammer. They just like to call and scare people. So that way they can manipulate you into sending them money. They like to tell you there's a car in Texas found with blood and drugs and fingerprints and lots of money and there's 16 bank accounts opened using your information and yada 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 don't fall for it don't do it and the easiest scam of all 
that still works really, really great is they'll either call you or they'll send you an email or contact you in some other way with an offer for cheaper cable, cheaper internet, cheaper utilities. That sounds really good, doesn't it? Like, let's take... I love picking on Amazon. <laughs> and it's not their fault. They can't help what these people do. Um, most of these people are overseas. There's no way to really prosecute them. Or catch them. They try. People try. But there's just not really a good way. Anyway. They'll tell you that... They can get you a cheaper deal on your Amazon Prime account. Or heck, let's just go ahead and take your internet, which is even better because the scam works really well for people, unfortunately. They will tell you, let's say you have Spectrum for internet and you're paying $100 a month. They will tell you that there's a promotion, a promotion now, mind you, of half price, meaning $50 a month. For the next two years, it can't go up and it can't change, and you're going to get these extra channels, and I'm going to take another drink. <laughs> that was last of that water. <laughs> anyway. That you'll get all these extra channels and this extra stuff and <coughs> that was really cold water excuse me and they'll give it to you half price the only catch is you have to pay that two years up front and the promotions being run by XYZ company. So you have to get the activation card from XYZ company. And all the activation card is, is a gift card. It's a gift card, guys. It's a gift card. Please do not fall for this. Please do not do it. If it sounds too good to be true, it is usually too good to be true. And I don't think they normally say like two years. They probably will try to say one year. Most of the videos I've watched have been uh, one year. That way they can run in, hurry up, grab a quick six, seven, eight hundred dollars off of you and run out the door. And you got nothing. Uh, the other half of a scam like this is when you're trying to set up something, say you're trying to set up your Roku, you're trying to set up your oh, what's that Google version? I can't think of it. Are you trying to set up your fire stick? Are you trying to set up, you know, something on your TV, an app, more, some hardware, and it's getting really frustrating and you're having a hard time and you go ahead, instead of looking in your paperwork for a proper phone number to call, you just Google the company. Now, these scammers pay good money to make fake websites that look suspiciously like the actual company and they're banking on you to misspell a part of the website that you're trying to look for or they're counting on you to click on the first site you see despite the fact that it's not actually the correct website. 
but it looks the web address looks an awful like lot like it should be the correct website and you call that phone number they get your password to whatever TV programs you're looking for and they hijack it they change the password they do you know whatever they want to do and they hold it hostage until you pay the money and let me tell you it doesn't end they will not release it until you've given them every cent of your money and they'll usually ask for wow ta-da gift cards some people have been conned into sending tens of thousand dollars via UPS or FedEx or even the US Postal Service and they tell you exactly how to disguise that money so that these carrier services have no idea what's inside and then they have money mules that pick up those packages and that's all she wrote your money's gone forever and most likely you still don't have your account these guys are ruthless they're evil they don't care about you they don't care about your family they don't care about your future they only care about that money that they're gonna steal from you oh allergies let me tell you I think we're almost done here her tails come along real good and then um, like I said I'm just gonna use some sparkly gel pins on the rest so that should be pretty quick anyway if you have questions about fraudulent activity or scams you can always ask in the comments below um, I am a little slow these days since I'm getting used to day shift uh, but I will get back with you usually within a week hopefully sooner <laughs> but I can't make promises because like right now it is now almost 1140 and I am exhausted but it's worth it because we're almost done I am gonna go ahead I got the new Lyra uh, Splendor Blender we're gonna test it out and see how it works I used it on another thing and I really like how it worked um, I think it's not there we go as good at smushing colors I was gonna get my old Prismacolor one out because this is pretty smooth paper too it's not as good as the Prismacolor one as far as smushing colors and covering the white of the paper um, it is good at blending colors so far I've seen Well, we'll just go ahead and go back to our old handy dandy Prismacolor uh, since this is a bit smoother paper just kind of smush everything together and I don't really have a particular pattern of you know like light to dark dark to light or whatever um, most of the time I mean I will use a scrap piece of paper to get the previous color pattern off but mostly unless it's like a super light color I'm not too worried about colors blending into each other especially on a fun little page like this it's just been so much fun actually I do kind of want to do the starfish real quick I'll do them in the fleshy colors but this part is just mostly to 
make sure the white of the paper is completely covered up. And yes, I know my Prismacolor blender looks kind of janky because it's two of them put together with some tape. I did try the super glue route and they just kept falling apart even though I would leave them overnight glued together. So maybe my super glue just isn't super great. <laughs> All right, let's pick a couple of colors out here. For the starfish. Or, ooh, 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 let's try these. Is that light peach? Yeah. I was going to say it's the wrong color. There we go. I think these two will go together just fine. Yep. All right. Let's go ahead and sharpen them up. Starfish. You know, and even though this is a pretty quick page, it's still taking about an hour to do the darn thing, which is okay. Mostly, it would a little quicker if I wasn't chit chatty. If I just sat here and be like, <laughs> all right. So the first sparkly pin we'll bring out will be Sparkle Pop, and this will be the gold color. Oh, let me swipe this off. There's not very many crumbs, but there's a few. There we go. I think that's actually a starfish in her hair, too. I love the Sparkle Pop pins. And I honestly thought about doing the stars and silver at first, but I was just like, I like the gold more. I really love the gold. It's a pretty color. Ew. It's a pretty color. It's a beautiful color. Well, that really looks like a regular star in her hair. We'll do a starfish, though. There we go. So let's go ahead and grab those colors again for the starfish in her hair. I really like these Arctic pencils. There we go. All right, then we're going to need, I don't know if I want to use the Tiros or the Midnights or Metallics or whatever. Let's use, I think this is a red metallic here. It's kind of a pinkish red. That'll be perfect for her lips. Ooh, and the little heart. I think this is orange, orangish colored. It's kind of a bronzy color. So let's go ahead and do this guy in that color, which will look kind of like gold, but once they dry, it'll be a little bit darker. Because it's a more bronzy color. And these are the Sakura, Sakura Metallics. And then let's for fun get a Milky Pop from Timu. Tamu, and put the date down here. Um, is it officially May 14th? No. <laughs> so there we go. Mermaid. Ta -da! And hopefully everybody enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. I know it was kind of a long one. I hadn't done a long one in a while, though. So I was kind of excited to do one and, and do a little bit of chatting. Um, recommend, recommend me uh, something you want to see me do. I have all kinds of books. I have all kinds of 
pencils, markers. I do have other gel pens besides the ones just sitting right over here that are all sparkly and pretty. Um, there's all kinds of things we could do. If you just have any suggestions or questions or you just want to see something in general, let me know. Um, I still have my Facebook group. I know it's kind of brand new and it's not very active right now, but we're going to work on that. I just need to get a few more members in there so we can have a good time. And uh, of course, you can follow me on Instagram. You can um, check out Let's see here, my Amazon wish list if you'd like to, that's up to you. Uh, as always, questions, comments, suggestions below. And I hope everyone enjoyed this video and I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. And for all the moms out there, happy Mother's Day. And may it be beautiful and bright and sunny. And have a colorific day, y'all. Thank you. Bye-bye.